This week in New York, we're going to continue to see some pretty brutal death tolls from the coronavirus. Probably over 800 deaths a day just from the virus alone. And obviously, there's evidence that the death toll is likely higher than what's being reported. Over in California, where my funeral home is, we are starting to get our first coronavirus cases, but we're not overwhelmed with dead bodies because the draconian lockdown measures that were put in place there seem to be working. My job is to study how the dead body is treated in American culture. In times like this pandemic, our relationship with death has moved from our subconscious mind, a fear that's hiding just under the surface, up to our conscious mind. When bodies are piling up, we can't ignore their reality anymore. Not only the reality of dying, but the reality of the physical, decaying, organic matter that's left behind. Because I am not smack in the middle of the pandemic in New York, some of what I'm going to say today may be a little armchair quarterback, a little backseat driver, but the funeral directors in New York City don't have time to talk to you right now. They're busy. What I'd like to do here is simultaneously comfort you and make you angry. I'm not trying to scare you because there's more than enough people profiting from fear right now. First of all, unfortunately, pandemics are inevitable. So somebody needs to tell the media and their evil twin, the social media, that preparation for pandemics is a good thing. Case in point, refrigerated trucks. Refrigerated trucks are good. Handled properly, they just toot on into town and keep those extra bodies cool, safe, and distant from the population. Reporting on these trucks, the media is acting like they've caught the government in a vile conspiracy. They're just forklifting bodies into trucks. Yes, and that's also what's done day to day at a normal crematory. It's done in an orderly fashion, but industrial raising and lowering devices pick the body up from the van or the hearse into the refrigerated storage and then into the cremation machine. It's possible the funeral industry is more industrialized than you thought, but without giving people that context, you're scaring them. You're taking normal mass death strategy and turning it into dystopian horror. I think we need to have the same attitude towards stories like the one from Spain about ice rinks being used to preserve these dead bodies. Remember when the curling rink was used for bodies after the Titanic? Sometimes there are buildings, big ones with a block of ice on them, that are ideal for storing dead bodies. That we need to use them at all indicates that many people are dying, which is terrifying, but we already know that. We know that intellectually. So the fact that the reports themselves are so salacious indicates not only a fear of dying, but I think of the dead and dead bodies. There was another photo from Spain of all these coffins waiting to be cremated, described as chilling. But as a funeral director, when I look at that photo, I also think chilling, but the different definition, like chillin'. They are chilling, they are neat, they are orderly, they are labeled, they are waiting to be cremated. Then there was this tweet from the New York City Councilman that said, Soon, we'll start temporary internment. This will likely be done by using a New York City park for burials. Yes, you read that right. Trenches will be dug for ten caskets in a line. Which, in the hands of the masses, quickly turned into time to start digging trenches for graves in Central Park. Turns out he was talking about a deep, multi-level contingency plan for disaster management, something that we anticipate we're never going to get to. Even if it does come to that, there is a plan to temporarily bury people on Hart Island, which is a cemetery, not a park. It's traditionally been used for the homeless or unclaimed dead. And it wouldn't be dumped into a pit. It would be carefully labeled, ordered, temporary grave, something that has a long precedence in disaster management. Even when the governor, the mayor, the medical examiner were all like, wait, what? Bodies in parks? Who is this man? What is he talking about? I don't know this man. Sorry to this man. I don't know who this man is. I mean, he could be walking down the street. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know a thing. Sorry to this man. All these headlines still said coronavirus bodies to be buried in parks. How did I know that I would be back here? Woke up the morning after I filmed this to the BBC, CNN, New York Times leading with front page drone footage of burial trenches being dug on Hart Island. 
totally out of context. Those type of trench burials for the indigent and unclaimed dead have been happening there for over a hundred years. Yes, there are more because of coronavirus, because, yeah, a pandemic. There are more bodies. But it is irresponsible to use those images as if any American could end up in a mass burial trench at any moment. Hashtag Trump burial pits is trending, and now it sounds like I'm defending Trump. Don't know how we got here. If it makes you uncomfortable to learn how the indigent and unclaimed are treated in the United States, yes, welcome. Please learn as much as you can, but do not propagate or share those images without context. Okay, back to the video. This is all to say, let's not let normal disaster responses terrify us. That being said, there are two issues with the New York City disaster response that I can see right now, and more may emerge in hindsight, but they mainly have to do with regulations that are hurting funeral directors' ability to do their jobs. First of all, why is it the sole responsibility of private businesses, like funeral homes and crematories, to manage the dead? My contacts have told me, off the record, that these refrigerated trucks being brought in are being used at morgues and hospitals. Once the funeral homes pick them up, all bets are off and they're responsible for the storage. Funeral homes do not have that much additional refrigerated storage on their site. We were literally talking about this in the last video. There's not enough refrigerated storage for the indigent and homeless dead. There's definitely not enough refrigerated storage for, surprise, some pandemic dead. My concern is that without enough refrigeration, funeral homes could turn to embalming bodies. Now, again, there is no proof yet or science yet that says the coronavirus body is dangerous to the living, but that science may emerge later. And for now, the World Health Organization basically recommends you do not embalm bodies because you're puncturing and aspirating the body. So without enough personal protective equipment, it could even possibly be dangerous for embalmers. Second is the issue of crematories running 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and still being backed up by over two weeks. Let me tell you a little story about economic protectionism in the New York death care industry. New York is one of only five states that requires crematories to be owned by cemeteries. You cannot build a crematory unless there is a cemetery to build one. This is bonkers to me coming from California, where crematories tend to be big, independent, freestanding warehouses. Adding to that, any cemetery in New York City tends to be surrounded by residential areas, and people don't want crematories being built in their backyards. In a normal year, not adding any new crematories actually benefits the funeral industry, because it keeps costs high, because there's no competition, because no new crematories can be built. I'm frantically texting my colleague Tanya Marsh because she always has the stats. Turns out, New York cremates more bodies per individual crematory than any state in the United States by far. In New York, the average crematory handles three and a half times the national average of deaths per crematory because they're forced to that capacity. New York didn't have enough crematories in a normal year. Forget during a pandemic. New York City funeral directors were routinely sending bodies out of state to be cremated before this even began. So you have this perfect storm of mass death and the most restrictive laws around crematories in the entire country. This is not to scare you. We are absolutely going to get through this. But it is something to be aware of and possibly change in the future. Here's my promise. I will keep making this face at the reporting. <laughs> And I hope that you continue to fight misinformation that you may see on your timeline or from your friends and family when you can. It is already tragic enough that people are dying and their family is not able to be there with them. We don't also need to stigmatize and demonize their dead bodies. The people in those trucks, they're someone's mother, husband, child. They're not diseased corpses. Stay safe, everyone. I am thinking about all of you right now, especially those of you who have had a death from coronavirus or otherwise, and I hope to see you on the other side of this. This video was made with generous donations from death enthusiasts just like you.
Phantom Head. <laughs>